Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending November 5th. And this first article is sent in by John B. and Catherine S. Catherine S. put it on the Dumpster Divers Facebook page. This is Uber's self-driving truck makes successful Budweiser delivery. I was going to talk about this last week, but I think I switched out for the story about Apple no longer working on cars, but just the brains for self-driving cars. Well, anyway, Anheuser-Busch announced it successfully sent a self-driving tractor trailer from Fort Collins to Colorado Springs last week. I think that's, what, about 120 miles or something like that. Um, there was actually a driver on board to monitor the trip, but they, the driver was not actually doing any driving. So, um, yeah, what I wanted to relate that article to, and it's just a short article, it's just a few paragraphs here, but I think it's kind of like the wave of the future that um, I've talked to some truck driver friends and they kind of see it coming in the next 10 years or so that um, for uh, straight shots across the interstate, uh, it may be a thing of the past to have truck uh, many truckers uh, actually do that themselves and it will be robotic trucks just for the cost savings and then the truck drivers will be doing more local runs. But the interesting one that goes along with this, and this is from my friend Jose Angel, can autonomous cars detect motorcycles? And for uh, especially for myself being a motorcycle driver, this is something really critical. So news coming from Europe suggests Dutch whole vehicle type approval for Tesla Model S automobile with autopilot limited driver assist feature may have been premature in the EU with new vehicle is approved in one member state that approval is then valid throughout the EU. Um, let me actually just go down to the part of the story here. Uh, around the same time in Germany, the magazine Der Spiegel published a report produced by the country's Federal Highway Safe Research Institute. Um, oh, let me go on down here. Where is it? Right here. FEMA suggested we take we look at U.S. research by John F. Linkite of Dynamic Research Torrance, California, which finds a the, that existing forward collision warning systems give inadequate results for motorcycles in 41% of test cases versus under 4% for cars. Now, that under 4% for cars does not give me a good feeling. I mean, that means out of every um, 100 times that you need collision avoidance for cars, four of the times it does not perform adequately. So even if you're in a car, um, a year's worth of driving, that's not going to be an adequate safety level for me. I mean, I'd want it to be, um, you know, a portion of 1% or something like that to, to make me feel good. But 41% of the test cases, and I'm thinking too, well, what about, you know, in the case of a car, you might survive, but not, you know, not possibly, you know, not for sure, but you may actually survive on a motorcycle if you're hit from behind by a car. But imagine a truck, if you have a truck going on the interstate, and uh, you have to all of a sudden slow down or, or stop for something ahead, and the truck doesn't see you. I mean, there's just no way you're going to win. I'm, I'm thinking that's probably about a 99% fatality rate if you're, uh, you know, on a motorcycle and you get squashed by a truck. So, yeah, if you get a chance, uh, check this out. The first one was from Fox, and this one is from Cycle World. And as usual, all the links down below. But this is really concerning to me too. I mean, I would be very concerned if they said that cars had a 0 0.0001 and motorcycles had a 4% um, rate of uh, um, collision avoidance problems. So, um, yeah, that means quite a few people are going to get killed. So, in that area, that may be something. If there's anything that does cause this to not happen in the next 10 years, that may be it. Because, yeah. Um, if we even see three or four stories per year of autonomous vehicles um, rear-ending people and hurting people or killing people, uh -uh, they ain't going to fly. Okay, this one is from Chris P. This is a Windows 10 for those people of you that run Windows 10. And listen to this too. I'll, I'll, this is kind of funny. This is from express.co.uk. Windows 10 major security bug exposed and Microsoft are not happy about it. So the author of this is Aaron Brown. I guess didn't really um, double check his headlines, but anyway, Google has published details about a critical vulnerability in Windows, something Microsoft isn't too happy about. It's actually an exploit that was used, I guess, for the so-called Russian hackers that hacked into the DNC servers. They used a, a flash vulnerability, and I guess already Adobe has patched that. So if you are a regular updater of your Adobe Flash, which I am myself. I don't like Flash very much, but I still need it for some websites to work properly. If you are automatically updating your Flash or have it to notify you automatically, you're probably going to be fine even with Windows 10 because 
Um, the exploit won't work if your flash is updated to the latest version. Uh, Microsoft themselves said um, that come this next Tuesday, November 8th, they will have the patch out for it. So your Windows 2 will be fine after that. But um, basically, yeah, just go and make sure your Adobe Flash is updated, and uh, that will pretty much take care of it for you. I still have not switched over to Windows 10 myself, just too many aggravations. Uh, the main thing that I just could not put up with, and I imagine there's some kind of workaround or something for it, but I've heard so many stories of people doing video editing or doing some important work on their computer, and then all of a sudden it goes into a, a reboot or a, some kind of a lockup because it wants to update on its own when it feels like. No. Until there's some way I can control the updating on Windows 10, I'm not willing to go and uh, join Windows 10 myself. So, anyway, let's see what else. Oh, um, one more thing I wanted to give you here, too. Let me open this up. I didn't have this opened up already, so let me get the link here ready. This is from, um, this is actually, uh, some Japanese designers actually won a prize over this. Um, some of you geeks like me have probably had world maps up on your wall. I had uh, world maps. I had uh, uh, a poster with all the planets on it and things like that, so... Uh, yeah, I've always been into map making and stuff like that. Well, evidently these uh, Japanese uh, designers have made one of the most accurate types of maps, and it's just a little odd kind of a map because, well, I'll show you a picture up here. I'll put the picture up because um, the continents seem kind of tipped in relation to each other. Well, you're always going to have artifacts when you try to get a map um, as a flat rectangle on a wall to represent a spherical surface. There's just no way around that you're going to have... Uh, something be out of shape. I mean, the most common um, type of, I think it's called a Mercator projection, which is the map that I had when I was younger. What ends up happening with that is uh, uh, you have effects like, uh, what's it called, the Greenland effect, where Greenland ends up being so huge, it looks like it's like half the size of the uh, United States uh, and uh, maybe Canada too. So you get those kind of effects, or you get uh, Antarctica being way out of proportion. So this one kind of keeps the continents more or less. It's still not perfect, it, like like the guy said that designed it. Everything has errors in it, but this is called the Orthograph World Map, and down below, um, if you check it out, um, you can actually get a, a pretty high high definition resolution of it. You can actually buy one of these yourself, but if you have to buy it and have it shipped to the United States, I think it costs like 78 bucks, so um, kind of expensive for just maybe a, a poster-sized piece of paper or something like that, but um, if you've got the printing capability to do it, print it out maybe in tile form or something, um, you can click on the link that I have to a, a pretty high resolution JPEG picture. And uh, maybe if you're crafty enough, you can make one of these yourself. But um, uh, one of the pictures here, it shows you where you can uh, uh, do it into a spherical type of shape. You can do it into a pyramid type of shape and uh, have it come out to be pretty good and pretty accurate. It also gives you correct distances across the ocean with these tipped continents too. Because if you've ever looked at um, flights, like uh, maybe from one part of the country to the other, or one part of the globe to the other, you'll see stopovers in cities that just make no sense. They seem so far out of the way. Well, when you're looking at a flat projection of the map, it will look like when you're going from one place to the other, a stop halfway between will seem way out of the way, and it won't seem like the shortest distance, but it really is. But you have to think about the fact you're looking at a flat map rather than um, the plane itself is traveling over a spherical shape, which um, puts things in, in different places and distances and stuff like that. So anyway, that's about it for this week. Um, thank you, everybody that contributed. I really appreciate it a lot. And uh, take care. I will catch you next week.